Good morning. All Saints Lockerby and St. John the Evangelist Moffat welcome you to the online Holy Eucharistic service, fourth Sunday after Epiphany. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God is love, and we are God's children. There is no room for fear in love. We love because God loved us first. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. God our Father, we confess to you and to our fellow members in the body of Christ that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. Forgive us our sins and deliver us from the power of evil. For the sake of your Son, who died for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, who is both power and love, forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by God's Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. How mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Living God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives, make known your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now let us listen to the word of God. The first reading is taken from the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verses from 1 to 5. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, the messenger of his covenant, in whom you will delight indeed. He is coming, says the Lord of hosts, but who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand? When he appears, for he is like a refiner's fire, and like a fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi, and refine them like gold and silver, until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of old, and as in the former years. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. I will be swift to bear witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, against those who oppress the hired workers in their wages, the widow and the orphan, against those who thrust aside the alien and not fear me, says Lord Foast. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm this morning is Psalm 138. I will praise you with my whole heart. Before the gods I will sing praises to you. I will worship towards your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above all your name. 
In the day when I cried out, you answered me and made me bold with strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. Yes, they shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord is on high, yet he regards the lowly, but the proud he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand will save me. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hands. Praise the Lord. A reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, commencing at verse 1. If I speak in tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully. Even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to Christ our Saviour. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, 
Mary and Joseph brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death, before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came to the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus, guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband, seven years after her marriage. Then as a widow to the age of 84, she never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything, recurred by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Give thanks to the Lord for his glorious gospel. Praise to Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In today's Gospel reading, we see the infant Jesus who was brought to the temple to be consecrated according to the Jewish religious custom. It was 40 days after the birth of Jesus. According to the Jewish religious tradition, Jesus was circumcised and named after reaching his eighth day. And 32 days later, he was brought to the temple in order to be consecrated to the Lord. The one more reason Joseph and Mary and the infant Jesus went to the temple on the 40th day was because Mary had to perform the ritual of purification after the childbirth. The usual temple offering in that circumstance was a lamb, but being poor, old Mary and Joseph could afford was two pigeons. When they reached the temple, they were warmly welcomed, acknowledged, and spiritually inspired by two people. They were not priests, not Pharisees, not representatives of Roman authorities, but they were just two relatively unknown people, Simeon and Anna. Their eyes fixed on only one thing, the newborn king. The Bible says they were righteous and God-fearing people whom God sent as witnesses. When the infant Jesus was presented to the temple, they praised and thanked God and revealed the renewing and consecrating power of the Creator God. 
From this, grace, from this great story, I would like to draw three spiritual facts that can inspire our faith journey to walk fearlessly and confidently towards the crucified and the resurrected Christ. The first spiritual fact we are able to draw from this story is that the presentation in the temple begins with praise and thanksgiving. When the infant Jesus was brought to the temple, Simeon, a righteous and a devout servant of God, was there. He took the baby in his arms and praised God. Inspired by the Holy Spirit, he said to God, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation. The Holy Spirit rested upon him always. Among the Old Testament prophets, the Spirit of God came upon prophets and others to accomplish particular tasks for the Lord. On the other hand, the New Testament reveals that the Holy Spirit dwells permanently within God-fearing people rather than sporadically for particular tasks. In this story, there is one more person who was in the temple giving praises and giving thanks to God always. It was Anna, the daughter of Phanuel. She was a widow. She was married for seven years and then her, her husband died. She must have experienced a lot of struggles and pains. Such experiences can make us bitter and resentful. Or such experiences can make us kinder, softer and more sympathetic. Anna is now 84 years old and has been spending much of her time in the temple worshipping God with fasting and prayer. She never left the temple. She practically lives in the women's court of the temple day and night. And she is a prophetess, a female prophet. When Simeon and Anna found the infant Jesus, they praised God and gave him thanks. Their hearts were overwhelmed with joy and peace. The story points out that our life will be a joyous and peaceful experience when we are able to see the image of Christ the King in the life and ministry of the church. And it is possible as we give him praise and gratitude for the ways he leads us. Let us welcome Jesus into our fellowship, into our family and into our community life. He is our carer. He is our Redeemer and He is our Mighty King. Let us give Him praise and gratefulness. The second spiritual fact manifested in this story is that the presentation in the temple invites us to be renewed and to renew our fellow beings. This story vividly and authentically speaks to us that the Spirit of God was with Simeon and Anna during their service at the temple. They were always guided by the Holy Spirit. And they had unwaveringly believed that they were the instrument of the Holy Spirit to renew the hearts and minds of the people who come to the temple. Their long faith tradition, which was founded upon the Yahooistic tradition, had given them a beautiful image of the Creator God who enters his temple in person. We can see this image in today's first reading. The prophet Malachi shows the Lord in person entering his temple and beginning his work of renewal. The Lord Yahweh effects a General purification. God acts like a fire that refines metal. The prophet Malachi says that Yahweh will purify Israel's worship and make it once again worthy and pleasing to the Lord. Today's collect also motivates us to pray to God for our purification and renewal. Through today's collect, 
We pray to God to make all things new and to transform our lives. Being presented in the temple, Jesus enters the house of the Father and is offered to him as the worthiest and most pleasing offering. For Mary and Joseph, it was a great moment to be purified and transformed and to transform the world by offering their son. They offered their son in the temple. Their son, the son of God, was sent by God because God loved the world and loves us too. Simeon and Anna, in their long waiting, saw the love of God in the human form. The psalmist says to the Lord, in today's Psalm, Psalm 48, verse 9, O God, in the midst of your temple, we ponder your steadfast love. God's temple is the temple of love. St. Paul reminds us that if you can love your neighbor or your fellow beings, that is the greatest offering that you can offer. Love never ends. St. Paul ends the 13th chapter of his first epistle to the Corinthians by saying that, And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of these is love. The love that is explained in this chapter gives us a great assurance that nothing can separate us from the love of the crucified Christ that we have been experiencing today. That love has transformed us and inspires us to transform our fellow beings. We are also being transformed by the knowledge that the love that is God is also present in everything, including all living and non-living beings. Thirdly and finally, the presentation in the temple invites us to be consecrated and to consecrate. St. Luke recorded that Simeon was waiting for the consolation of Israel. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Simeon was eagerly looking forward to the redemption of people from darkness, religious fanaticism, social and economic divide, and was waiting for the coming of the Messiah and his kingdom. On this particular day, God's Spirit guides him to the temple where he meets the infant Jesus and his parents. He recognized them among all those people. He recognized the infant Jesus. He took the baby in his arms and praised to God. What a joyous moment it was. If you have ever just witnessed an answer to prayer, then you know something of the joy that Simeon feels welling up within him. It was indeed a great moment for Mary and Joseph. Their hearts and minds were overwhelmed with joy and pressure. But that joyous moment was broken by the prophetic words of Simeon. After blessing the child, he said to Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. His words consist of two images, an image of a peacemaker and an image of of the pain of a peacemaker. We will meditate upon them in the next few weeks. Guided by the Holy Spirit, Anna also recognized the infant Jesus. And she began to praise God and speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. I would like to say that their words shone a light in the dark place. Their words were echoed in the temple as the consecrating words for the Redeemer of the world, the Messiah. Through their words of consecration, the Messiah was introduced as a suffering Redeemer. 
in that consecration the cradle of the infant jesus became the cross for redemption in order to get consecrated our lives the cradle of the infant jesus became the cross the messiah came to purify our life but not the way people expected some left their boats and nets some left their families their business and followed him some rejected him some opposed him but when he inaugurated his kingdom the lame danced the blind saw the lepers were cleansed and the poor got new hope for a better life and the fear of death was defeated let me conclude my sermon in simeon and anna we can hear god's call a call from the most high to see the lord in the temple life and in our everyday life let us give our life to god to be guided always by his spirit as simeon and anna did let us stretch out our hands to receive the image of the infant jesus in the cradle and the image of christ the redeemer on the cross amen let's pray in this week of prayer for christian unity we remember the hymn Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for being here in your presence today. As we ponder upon these words of St. Paul, please draw close to us in our prayers and lead us in growing in our spiritual love and love and understanding for our fellow beings as we journey through the life you have given us on earth and a loving and caring spirit for your creation. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the writers of the Gospels and other Holy Scriptures and for all those people throughout the centuries who have been and are an inspiration to us when times are hard. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the people in our health service who work unceasingly to save lives, doctors, nurses and support staff, working in hospitals and in the community. Please give them strength as they themselves are stricken with illness and fatigue after so long a battle. Give strength to our ambulance crews and indeed to all emergency services on land, the sea and in the air. Please give strength to patients who have long waiting times for medical treatment. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, please encircle with your healing love those who are sick. We think of Julia Carruthers, Pat Clark, Gary Taylor, Janice Moffat, Hildred Juni. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, please give strength to all those people whose businesses have suffered as a result of the pandemic. Please guide and give them strength to carry on. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, please bless the Queen, 
guide her as she nears her platinum jubilee. Endow her with health, strength and wisdom. We thank you for her devotion to her duties. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Please guide our government at home and overseas. Present, we think especially of our representation in Ukraine. Please guide government ministers as they lead us in coming out of COVID restrictions. Guide people into respecting the rules. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, we pray for your Christian church worldwide and its leaders. We pray for our own church, for Bishop Kevin, Primus Mark, Priest Paul Singh, and our churches of All Saints Lockerbie and St John's Moffat. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Creator Heavenly Father, as we relax COVID restrictions, please guide us forward, remembering what we learned from the pandemic, how to work together globally, how a reduction in pollution by factories, cars, planes can clear the air which all living creatures breathe. Guide young entrepreneurs when dealing with environmental issues. Heavenly Father, Creator God, guide us forward. In our lives, caring for your planet, our fellow beings and all life on earth, and heeding St. Paul's words. I quote, And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Lord, Hear us, Lord, graciously hear us. Amen. It is with sadness that we learn that Anne Fairn passed away on Wednesday. We are thankful that Anne's only family who live far away were able to visit her just before she died. In giving thanks for Anne's long life, we pray for solace for Anne's sister Kit and her nieces Heather and Catherine. May Anne rest in peace and rise in glory. We meet in Christ's name. Let us share his peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. Let us present our offerings to the Lord. You, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own we give you. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Worship and praise belong to you, God our Maker. Out of nothing you called all worlds into being, and still you draw the universe to its fulfillment. Day and night celebrate your glory, till time shall be no more. In Christ, your only begotten Son, you have revealed yourself to the world by the guiding of a star, you made him known to the nations as the son of David and king of Israel. 
that in following him we might be led from darkness and into his marvelous light filled with the spirit who descended upon your son at his baptism in the jordan we who are baptized in his name strive for his heavenly kingdom in whose radiance we are transfigured and the earth is transformed as children of your redeeming purpose we offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven singing the hymn of your unending glory holy 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 lord god of power and might heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest Glory and thanksgiving be to you most loving father in Jesus the messiah you have come to us our hope is built on him in whom you are well pleased having been shown to the world as your beloved son he proclaimed the good news of his kingdom the blind received their sight the lame walked the lepers were cleansed and the captives set free at his word water became wine the hungry were filled with bread and the dead were raised before he was given up to suffering and death desiring to complete the work for which he came into the world at supper with his disciples he took bread and offered you thanks he broke the bread and gave it to them saying take eat This is my body it is broken for you After supper he took the cup he offered you thanks and gave it to them saying Drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant it is poured out for you and for all that sins may be forgiven do this in remembrance of me We now obey your son's command we recall his blessed passion and death his glorious resurrection and ascension and we look for the coming of his kingdom made one with him we offer you these gifts and with them of ourselves a single holy living sacrifice hear us most merciful father and send your holy spirit upon us and upon this bread and this wine that overshadowed by his life giving power there may be the body and blood of your son and we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your kingdom help us who are baptized into the fellowship of Christ's body to live and work to your praise and glory may we grow together in unity and love until at last in your new creation we enter into our heritage in the company of the virgin mary the apostles and prophets and of all our brothers and sisters living and departed through jesus christ our lord with whom and in whom in the unity of the holy spirit all honor and glory be to you lord of all ages world without end Amen. The living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, unite us in this sign. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. as we forgive those who sin against us do not bring us to the time of trial but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen lamb of god you take away the sins of the world how mercy on us lamb of god you take away the sins of the world how mercy on us lamb of god You take away the sins of the world grand as peace
Give thanks to our gracious God, whose mercy endures forever. Let's pray. Source of all goodness, in this Eucharist, we are nourished by the bread of heaven and invigorated with new wine. May these gifts renew our lives, that we may show your glory to all the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Let's receive God's blessing. Christ, the Son of God, gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.